As reported in the last episode, on December 31st, the U.S. Central Command announced a significant action in the waters around the Arabian Peninsula. The statement reads, On December 31st at 6.30 a.m. Sana'a time, the container ship Maersk Hangzhou issued a second distress call in less than 24 hours, reporting being under attack by four Iranian-backed Houthi small boats. The small boats, originating from Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen, fired crew-served and small-arms weapons at the Maersk Hangzhou, getting to within 20 meters of the vessel, and attempted to board the vessel. U.S. helicopters from the USS Eisenhower and USS Gravely responded to the distress call, and in the process of issuing verbal calls to the small boats, the small boats fired upon the U.S. helicopters with crew-served weapons and small arms. The U.S. Navy helicopters returned fire in self-defense, sinking three of the four small boats and killing the crews. The fourth boat fled the area. So it's safe to assume that what the statement refers to as U.S. Navy helicopters deployed aboard an aircraft carrier and a destroyer RH-60 Seahawks. But what the statement doesn't mention is what weapons were employed and what squadrons those helicopters were attached to. In the previous episode, I mentioned that among the mix of them was likely several from HSC-7, the Dusty Dogs, which is the helicopter squadron attached to Carrier Air Wing 3 aboard the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower. HSC-7 flies the Sierra model of the Seahawk. And I also say that the weapon of choice in this scenario was probably the 50 caliber machine gun mounted on the starboard side of the aircraft and operated by the crew chief. I just received more detail from an unofficial but credible source who offered a more accurate picture of what went down on December 31st. When the Maersk Hangzhou issued the distress call, the closest U.S. Navy ship was Gravely. That Arleigh Burke-class destroyer launched a single MH-60 Romeo Seahawk helicopter attached to HSM-74, the Swamp Foxes. That Romeo was armed with four AGM-114 Hellfire missiles. Using the helicopter's forward-looking infrared, mounted under the nose at about 10 miles standoff range, the crew acquired the group of four Houthi boats. As the crew monitored their FLIR display, they saw that the Houthis were firing at them with both crew-served weapons and small arms, which met the definition of hostile intent in accordance with the 5th Fleet Rules of Engagement. They shot all four of their Hellfires, which destroyed three of them and killed all ten of the rebel pirates aboard. The fourth Houthi boat sped back to the north after watching the others sink, and by the time a second Seahawk arrived on the scene, an H-60 Sierra attached to the HSC-7 Dusty Dogs of Carrier Air Wing 3 aboard Eisenhower, the boat was out of Hellfire range and got away. The Hellfire missile was used extensively by U.S. Army Apaches and CIA Reaper drones during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Navy H-60s are armed with the AGM-114R, a semi-active laser homing version that weighs just over 100 pounds and costs around $100,000 per missile. The max range of the Hellfire is just over 10 nautical miles, which in the case of the Houthi attack, kept the Americans well out of machine gun and small arms range. In response to the American action, Houthi spokesman Brigadier General Yahya Shari issued the following statement. Quote, the American enemy forces attacked three boats belonging to the Yemeni naval forces, which led to the martyrdom and loss of 10 members of the naval forces. American military movements in the Red Sea to protect Israeli ships will not prevent Yemen from performing its religious, moral, and humanitarian duty in support and victory for the oppressed in Palestine. End quote. In the wake of the sinking of the Houthi boats, the Iranian Navy deployed one of their destroyers, the Al Bors, to the Red Sea. Iranian officials have called the deployment routine and something their warships have done for years. They also pointed out that in 2021, the Albors repulsed a pirate attack against two oil tankers in the Gulf of Aden. However, the Iranians certainly aren't joining in on the efforts of the coalition navies associated with Operation Prosperity Guardian, the task force set up to counter Houthi attacks on commercial shipping transiting the Bab el-Mandeb Strait. Like the Houthis, Iran has pledged support for Hamas specifically and Palestinians in general for their efforts in what they describe as, quote, standing up to Israel, end quote. Most recently, Iran's security chief, Ali Akbar Ahmadian, held a meeting with top Houthi negotiator Mohammed Abdul Salam. And while the exact nature of their discussion is unknown, it probably had more to do with arms supplies than Iran directing the Houthis to tamp down their provocative attacks on shipping. Tensions with Israel are also heightened in the wake of airstrikes in Syria and Lebanon that killed Sayed Razi Mousavi, a top commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps, and more recently, Salah al-Aruri, a Hamas leader who was the main coordinator with Hezbollah. 
Meanwhile, elsewhere in the 5th Fleet AOR, as reported by our friends at USNI News, yesterday, Naval Forces Central Command Commander Vice Admiral Brad Cooper awarded sailors on the USS Kearney two Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medals, including one for Kearney Commanding Officer Commander Jeremy Robertson, and three Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medals. Admiral Cooper also awarded the Combat Action Ribbon to Kearney's entire crew. The awards come for the crew's action on December 16th, when Kearney shot down 14 Houthi-launched unmanned aerial vehicles in the Red Sea. This is the second award presented to members of Kearney's crew for actions in the Red Sea. For Kearney's actions on October 19th, when the crew used SM-2s to shoot down three land attack missiles and several drones fired from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen, 21 crew members received awards, and Skipper Robertson received the Bronze Star. And finally, after being extended for more than two months beyond the original deployment schedule as a result of the presence mission created in the eastern Mediterranean following the Hamas attack on Israel on October 7th, the U.S. Navy has announced that the USS Gerald R. Ford is heading home to give the crew a well-needed break and because the fleet's newest aircraft carrier is scheduled for maintenance and planned upgrades that can't be delayed beyond what they already have been. As a stopgap until another aircraft carrier can be deployed to the 6th Fleet AOR, the Bataan Amphibious Ready Group has been re-aggregated in the Met, meaning two of the three ships that were in the Red Sea, the USS Bataan and the USS Carter Hall, have transited the Suez Canal to the north and rejoined the ARG's third ship, the USS Mesa Verde. While the ARG does have offensive striking power, its primary mission around the Israel-Hamas conflict is the evacuation of Americans in the region in the event that the hostilities spread. More on this volatile situation as the information is available, so if you're not already a subscriber, become one so you don't miss anything going forward. And in the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.